let's talk about the standards for mathematical practice. There are eight of them, and these are uh, practices that we want to infuse into our lessons as teachers. So some of these might be things that you're like, oh, I'm already doing that. You kind of subconsciously think about those. Others of them we want to more explicitly address. So let's first start by understanding the eight standards for mathematical practice. The first mathematical practice is to make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. We want all of our students to persevere, and we talk a lot about perseverance in the classroom these days because students really need to understand that the only way to get better at math is to practice, right? We need more hours into it to be better at math. We want them to persevere in solving difficult problems, just like a good workout should make you sore, a good math lesson should really make students wonder. It should really make them uh, problem solve and we want them to persevere as they do this. I almost think that this mathematical practice could be infused into any lesson, even things outside of math. Next, let's talk about mathematical practice number two. Reason abstractly and quantitatively. Basically what this one means is we want students to be really flexible with their use of numbers. We want them to be able to take a problem and um, turn it into maybe a numerical expression. Likewise, we want them to be able to take an expression and turn it into um, a story problem or a word problem. So we really want them to be able to reason with those numbers, to be flexible, to use these. These are where our number operation strategies come into play. As a teacher, we want to be ready to accept multiple answers and have students defend their answers um, so that we can understand their thinking. For mathematical practice number three, it's construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. This is what we want good problem solvers to do, right? We want them to not only be able to explain their thinking, but then really work hard to follow others' thinking and check the reasoning. Check to see, is my partner on the right track? What questions could I ask them to further understand their thinking? We also want them to be able to explain the strategy they're using and compare this to how other students are also solving the same problem. Mathematical practice number four talks about modeling with mathematics. Real life is math. We want them to be able to pick out this math in real life and then model it using pictures, symbols, equations, drawings, words. So be able to take the math out of a problem and model that. Mathematical practice number five is to use appropriate tools strategically. Here's what that means. If we're posing the question to students of what tools should we use to measure how heavy something is, we want them to know that it's a scale, not a ruler. So we want to be able to, in our lessons, provide them with multiple tools and have them make the decision of, you know what, I need a scale, I don't need a ruler. Um, or if they're measuring an angle, then maybe they need a protractor, not a ruler or things like that. So um, we want them to be able to actually select those without us having to select them for them. All of the standards for mathematical practice really focus on students doing the work, not teachers. Again, it's not that as a teacher, I'm setting the tool out. I'm providing them with, let's say, a mathematical toolbox, and they're able to choose which tool they need. The sixth mathematical practice talks about attending to precision. We want students to focus on using the correct vocabulary. Um, should we use the word cancel? We're gonna talk about that later this semester. I want you to attend to precision and let's have that start with you as future teachers. You're going to attend to precision with your mathematics vocabulary. This precision also applies to symbols, labels, and correct strategies as well. Mathematical practice number seven says that we need to look for and make use of structure. We want students to make these connections that, for instance, all closed figured shapes with straight sides are polygons. We want them to understand that, oh, that means 
A square is a polygon. A rectangle is a polygon. A hexagon is a polygon. This could also mean when we think about composing and decomposing numbers. The number 11 is made up of 10 plus 1. It could also even be making use of structure in the number properties. The commutative property says that 1 plus 3 is the exact same as 3 plus 1. Things like that would be examples of look for and making use of structure. The last mathematical practice is mathematical practice number eight, which says to look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. Here's what we're looking for there. We want students to see patterns in numbers. So say for instance, if I'm skip counting by two, hmm, I notice that the last digit is always an even number. Another example of repeated reasoning might be when we look at place value. So I notice that when I have 10, it's 10 plus zero, that last digit in the ones. If I have 11, I have 10 plus 1, and I notice that that gives me a 1 and a 1 for my digits. When I have 10 plus 2, I have the 1 from the 10, the 2 from the 1s, and that is equivalent to 10 plus 2. This could also be looking at a multiplications chart and finding the patterns there that all of the multiples in 5 either end in 0 or 5. We want students to find those reasonings on their own, and that's done by repeating things over and over again. This could also be um, something like they notice that when they multiply a negative number times a negative number, they always get a positive number. Really finding those new bits of information that they figure out based on that repeated reasoning. I want to emphasize a couple of things now that you know the eight standards for mathematical practice. One, remember the emphasis is always on the students doing the work. Even with this last one that I was talking about, I didn't come as a teacher and say, hey students, guess what? All multiples of five always end in zero and five. I'm not gonna tell them that. I'm not gonna rob them of that experience, right? I want them to find the pattern. So I'm really always focusing on the students making the work, not me as the teacher. The other thing I want you to remember is that you should not strive to put all of these in every lesson. You won't be able to put all of them in every lesson, and that's okay. Strive for one to really reflect on your lesson to think about which one of these can I put into my lesson um, and which one makes the most sense or which two or three make the most sense. I hope you found this video helpful and you now have a better idea of the standards for mathematical practice.